Hello everyone, hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome back to the YouTube channel. I hope you enjoy watching and know that everything you see here is streamed over at twitch.tv slash infernaldrogos, which is where I stream a variety of different games, so if you want to support me or say hi, that's where you should definitely go. Also, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as it helps me out so much to get more people to look and see these beautiful videos. Other than that, I hope you enjoy the video and have a fantastic day and who did news? Well, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic day, evening, or afternoon, whatever time it is for you. My name is Pearl Drogos. I am a Paladin's content creator. Hope you're doing fantastic. There is no script to this video, so I'm just going to put that warning now. There may be some mistakes here that I just don't really cut out because I'm too lazy. Uh, today's video, I am going to be talking about the best possible settings you can have for Paladins to maximize your efficiency in the game and other little trinkets like that. Uh, Paladin's default settings are not good at all, and I'm sure some of these will help you guys. I highly recommend just doing all of them, uh, but some of these may be personal preferences, some others may not be, but these are what I would consider the best possible settings you can have in Paladin. So, uh, let's get started. So, we're gonna go to Options, one of the biggest settings I think people don't really take into consideration is FOV or field of view. Default, I believe, is extremely low. I think it's at 80. So this is what your game will normally look like close to uh, base, right? But if you notice, I'm going to stand right here was my screen like this but if you notice that if you increase your fov all the way to max 120 you have a lot more screen space you can see a lot more area around you if you noticed my screen when my fov was slow was right here this was the top of my screen but the higher i went the more screen space you have and you can still 100% play the game perfectly fine. In fact, it feels a lot better with max out FOV. I highly recommend maxing out your FOV for, again, maximum efficiency. You will see a lot more space around you. And for some characters, it may actually become easier to hit your shots. Set your FOV to max, so the sooner you get used to it, sooner the better, instead of randomly in the middle of a match, because it might get a little confusing. Uh, if you previously had your FOB lo lower at any point, you can see it moving in the background, by the way. If you had your FOB lower at any point, I highly recommend switching after a match and then turning it up uh, before you get into a match so you can start getting used to it naturally. Or you could slowly increase it over time to hopefully get used to it eventually. But no matter what, at the end of the day, having this max will allow you to see a lot more people around you. Um, Gamma is a personal preference. I said it at 22. At, that's what it always has been. Everything else is personal preference. Remember that if you are experiencing frame drops in Paladins, to make sure to mess with your settings, these are what I have for as much frames as I can while the game still looks nice. World details are low. Shadow detail actually should be low. Shadows actually provide an unfair advantage to some people, but also provides a disadvantage to some people. Uh, I recommend putting it on low if you want increased performance. Same goes for particles, I have it on medium. I have textures on max, which is why the characters still look good despite other areas being low. Now, audio is again very, very specific, but I highly recommend having voice chat enabled for those who are interested in going into the ranked game mode. Apologies if you hear Tyra weapon in the background. Um, voice chat, uh, push to talk is also highly recommended. A lot of you will have this on by default and will not have push to talk. So make sure you go into the settings and enable this. This is especially common on console where people will go into a game that has voice chat enabled with no push to talk enable and you hear like this loud static from someone's microphone because for some reason the game thought it would be funny to have their push to talk off by default. We're gonna go over here, pause the game again so we don't have noise in the background. 
Now, this is where the tips are going to get interesting. I highly, highly, highly recommend you pay attention very, very carefully. Game tips will be on by default. It will be like this. Make sure you set it to disabled. The game tips are not helpful. I, I promise from the bottom of my heart, bottom of my cold dead heart, how those game tips are not helpful. To have damage numbers on combat log enabled. This is for PC only console. Do not have this. You will have this on default, right? Go all the way right and set it to legacy deprecated. Do this. This makes VGS so much easier to use. I'll go to default to show you. If I wanted to, let's say, VER, which is supposed to be you rock on legacy, I would have to go through this. Let's see. B, C, E, E. That's awesome. B, E, and you see how weird that looked. B, C, E, E is awesome. But if I wanted to, let's say, do. Let's pause that again. Apologies. That's the wrong thing. If I want to say awesome on the legacy, guess what I do? B, E, W. Or B-E-A. That's not a thing. No, it is a thing. It's just not working. Well. I, as I'm typing it, you can see. But it is B-E-A. Might be disabled for my game. I don't know what's wrong. Reminder, Paladin is a buggy game. But B-E-A is a lot easier to type than V... What was it? Q-E-E? -E? Like... One's obviously easier than the other. Need healing is also a lot easier because need healing is VHS. That's it. VEH VHS. It's a lot easier to use the VGS with legacy. Please have this on. It again, it's so much easier to use. It's a lot it, it's just easy, please, for the love of God. Uh scoreboard, do not touch. Do not have it on advanced. This will bug your game in certain areas. I do not know if this is on by default. Always show player health is extremely important, especially if you're playing support. Have this enabled. Centered skill bar is more of a personal preference, but I highly recommend having this enabled. If you had it disabled, this is what it would look like. My skill bar will be down here in the bottom right corner. But if you have it enabled, not only is my skill bar in the middle of my screen and it's a lot easier to look at, you'll notice over here you get another UI for items. If you could see your loadout, you can see what items you buy here. Let's buy an M2, for example. Free. Give them hell. And you'll see that Nimble has popped up down here and you can see your credits. So I recommend having centered skill bar. It's a lot easier to look down at your abilities as well and get used to it. You will also see your items load out, or load out name, really, and how many credits you have, which is extremely important for right before you die if you need to buy anything. HUD skills order is weird. Uh, I highly recommend it having it on Legacy because it keeps everything in the same exact spot based off of your input. If you don't have it enabled, your abilities could shift around weirdly and you will not like it. Uh, for example, right now, I have right click Q, ultimate, which is E, L shift for my movement ability, and spit. If you have it on default, it will look a lot weirder. Right click, no, left click, right click, ultimate Q shift. Uh, this Again, this is more of a personal preference. But I highly recommend it having it on Legacy because it keeps everything exactly the same regardless of your input. If you swap inputs, I believe your abilities will shift and be confusing because when you're in a game and you want to use the ability and you memorize where that ability is at the bottom of your screen, you're literally going to glance there and see the cooldown and then glance away. But if that ability has shifted randomly on the screen, you're going to get confused because maybe that ability is actually on cooldown and you just happen to glance at the wrong ability because the ability shifted. 
So make sure you have this set to Legacy because that will keep the abilities in the exact same spot. Show Team UI is extremely, extremely important. This is one of the most important aspects of Paladin's UI. This is what you'll have by default. Now we wait a bit. You'll see there's nothing at the top of my screen. My buck's gonna die and it's gonna show the respawn timer. This is what sorry. default looks like. This is not good. Because guess what? There's a better option. If you have show team UI enabled, which you need to enable it, you'll see this is what your UI looks like at the top. You'll have all your champions. You'll see their health bars. You'll see their ultimate charge. And you will see their respawn timer at the same exact time. So once my bot Damba dies, you'll see it also still shows your respawn timer and grayed out. So it's a lot easier to see. I highly, 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 highly recommend this because it helps so much you quickly glance up while your team may or may not be in spawn and you guys want to figure out, okay, we have this ultimate, we have this ultimate, and we have this ultimate. Of course, you can also see ult charge through the tab menu right here, but no one's going to press tab. Look at the teeny little numbers that are just sitting there. When you can just look up and see health bars as well and everything during the gameplay. I have show ally death markers on. Again, this one's also preference, but as you can see, uh, the two ally markers here, this helps you figure out, okay, my teammate has died over there. Obviously, that means there's an enemy over here where, and you'll be able to like maybe get away from that area. This also helps you notice, look around in the match if you're not looking up at the top at the respawn timers. If you look around, you'll see like a bunch of these lying around. That means your entire team is dead and you need to retreat. It, obviously, if you have it disabled, which it is usually disabled by default, it might have changed. Uh, you will not see these at all and it will be hard to tell where your team has died. And I think knowing where your team has died is extremely important, especially when it comes to communication. Uh, heal feed. Ah, uh, is more preference. I have it on middle because it's easier for me to see. But this one is 100% preference. I highly recommend you go through this and play games and see which where you would prefer to see this at. This one is also extremely important. Everyone has auto purchase items by default when they first create a Paladin Scout. The game will automatically buy you items in the item store. I'll turn it on. And this is what it will look like. If you have this screen, turn it on. It is your choice to buy what items you want. On top of that, the Paladin's auto purchase system is really bad. Because it will be constantly buying the wrong items for you. And especially when it comes to items like Wrecker. If the enemy team has shields, the auto purchase system will not buy Wrecker. It will only buy items that are most bought by players. On a specific character, for example, Drogo's, it will buy Nimble. And the way it stacks as items, it's extremely weird. It's a lot better for you to customize your own playstyle based off of the match yourself without auto purchase. And there is many different videos and tips out there that explains each item and what they do. You can simply go to the Paladin's Wiki, you can click on these and see what they said. But usually, auto purchase will not buy the right items. Like, again, if the enemy team has shielding, you buy Wrecker to help with the shields. Auto purchase will not do that. Always have auto purchase off. If you notice it, it's accidentally on. You can disable it through the item menu, or you can disable it here. Uh, the red, red, reticle? reticle crosshair is, again, preference. Same goes for controller icon. It depends on what controller you have, if you have a controller. I have toggle zoom off. Uh, you can enable or disable profanity filter. I highly recommend having it off. Show cauterize on team health bar is also extremely important if you are support. I do not believe this is on by default. But if you have it enabled, uh, the enemy team's, or not enemy team's, your ally's health bar will turn an ugly uh, green. If they are cauterized, cauterize takes away uh, healing or nerfs healing, essentially. So, anti-healing, let's say that. That's a lot better. So, for example, 9% cauterize, you'll only do 10% healing 
all of your healing numbers to that player that is cauterized. And this will help you figure out who is cauterized and who is not. I have show card cooldowns. It's extremely important for loadout cards that have an internal cooldown. It will show up on the side of the screen as, with a little timer to tell you, hey, this card is on cooldown. Here's how many seconds are left. Do not disturb. It's a customization. It's up to you. And obviously controls is completely preference. Controller is basically your control icon and it will tell you all your bindings to your controller. Bindings is extremely important. I highly recommend, by default, when you first log into Paladins, your ability to, which is your movement ability, will be set on F. I recommend switching it to L shift just so it can feel a lot better on your fingers and you'll have a little snappier and better response time than moving your fat finger to F when your finger is usually already on shift. And that's really all I recommend for bindings. You can obviously switch it depending on your character. Up here, you can switch it there. You can switch it to all characters. And obviously, you do not touch spectator because a lot of Spectator, spectator is literally a staple right now. And that's about it. And most, mostly everything else is based off of like your preference and cosmetics that won't really do much. But that's pretty much the best uh, Paladin settings you can possibly get for the game to be a lot more efficient. But yeah. That's that's all I have to really say. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope the settings helped you so so much. And I will see you all here very very soon again. I am wanting to do more tutorials, and this is simply the start of it. Uh, for those who are interested in Drogo tutorials, I will be redoing the loadout tutorial for everyone here very very soon. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope for you that are new to Paladins that the settings help. And I will see you guys very, very soon. There will be a too long to read in the description. And yeah, to loose.